Alan Kilpatrick from Michigan. Thank you, Madam Co-Chair, for convening us one more time. And thank you, gentlemen, for really your service, your wisdom, and for trying to get us back where we need to be. Not only has this war wrecked the diplomacy of our country since World War II and building out of that, the very nature of our own domestic problems as it relates to health and housing and education and just being the Congress. This Congress, this Republican Congress, has opted out, you use those words, General, just in terms of doing our due diligence as the Constitution provides us to do. We do none of that in the name of being Republican ideology. How then, with this critical situation that we have, and actually I do believe that we're, we'll, we are facing the greatest defeat in American history, those generals now who have retired and are speaking out know the flaws, the negligence that our military has had. It's not to their fault, it's really a president and a lieutenant secretary of defense who only rose to be a lieutenant from running the force and running our country in the ground. I commend you for what you do. Now having said that, we have a problem as Democrats, and I love this room, a lot of young people here who got to be thinking about what your children will be and how they will fare in the world, what kind of America they will inherit. How now then do we move through 06 in less than 40 days and move into 08 to regain the strength, the diplomacy, the access, the courage, the input to sustain ourselves as a country and as families in America? What role do we have when we speak, the pundits, the press, who rule America, I always tell my people, turn off that television, talk to each other a little bit more, try to learn from each other. How then do we get out of this? We are headed to great defeat. All the experts say we aren't going to win this war. Not only are we not going to win the war, but America, I don't see it being the strength that it was over the last 50 years. Economically, socially, how then do you advise us as policy makers and as the people in this room who will have children who already do probably small children? How, what must we do to rise above this cancer-stricken media who at any cost probably bought in many cases perpetuate a, a negative role for our country and for the people of America. I, you know, they like to couch it as a political sum. I really believe it's life and death for families and children and really for the institution here. I don't have anything to suggest okay. other than you know, absorb uh, General Odom's messages and try to some of his main points at every other about, about, about the fact that, particularly, that we're not talking about a, that withdrawal is a defeat or unpatriotic or that, yeah, then we we just, you just have to repeat that message. Let me make some points on that. Uh, let me express uh, a specific disappointment with the Democrats up here. There was a scene some time ago last year, I believe, when uh, Congressman Murphy uh, spoke out rather clearly and um, Somebody in the House Armed Services Committee proposed an immediate uh, uh, resolution to the House that everybody had to vote on withdrawal right now. And then it was, no, oh. we didn't. And, well, and that was never right. Now, what, I, what, what I, if I were in a Democrat up here, I would have said, oh, I have a counter motion. Why don't we mobilize 600,000 troops and send them over there and let you people have a victory <laughs> and let you sign up for this? <laughs> I, I, then we would have seen where they really are. And I don't see that kind of leadership. I, I don't see that. And I see you about to get taken right down the same road on Iran. If you want to change the U.S. position radically and recover from the situation, the single step that would do more to turn it around and to shock the world would be an opening with Iran. We have a lot of common interests with Iran. They hate Al-Qaeda, we hate Al-Qaeda. They want to sell oil, we ought to want to buy. Uh, they don't like instability in Iraq. They didn't like the Iraqis. We wanted, we didn't like Saddam. We did that for them. We really have two issues, Hezbollah and nuclear weapons. They are going to get nuclear weapons. We can use all the sticks we want. We'll get none of the advantages and all the disadvantages. If we're smart, we would say, you live in a bad neighborhood. You need nukes. Now let's cooperate. You know, that, that has to go out to the American people. We certainly do, but many of us on this group, the press caucus and others, kind of do just that. We don't break through the raw the minutia that's out there. It takes a people, of ordinary people from the ground up, people up and that project makers to change it. And what you all do in educating us is very helpful. 
you know the process here. We don't bring up anything, we can't pass anything, we stop making a lot of noise. But sometimes that's even interpreted as a negative and that is a positive. We need the American people to rise up, to speak up, well, to be more emboldened about who they are and what they want. But they have to, I mean, it's, but they hire you people to lead them. And that's what we try to do to the best of our ability and our minority status. I really think you ought to take this Iranian business on instead of the war drums on Iran. But we're the greatest proliferator in the world. We've caused more proliferation than anybody around. If we would ignore North Vietnam, North Korea, then they would essentially that take all the air out of the balloon of Kim Jong Il. And we're pumping him up, and he knows exactly how to punch us, and we jump up like Pavlov's dog. And, and, and we're doing the same thing with Iran when we, there's a the potential for an uh, incredibly important strategic relationship there that really could put a limit on how what the map is. Some of us are reaching just that way. Well, well I'm, glad, I'm really glad to hear it, and I encourage it very much. It's a very uh, inefficient microphone system. Uh, here's the order of the questioners. Uh, we have.